I'm honored and humbled to have been asked to serve as your Master of Ceremonies, and I'm even more pleased at my role as Chairman of the Board of Governors of this great university to extend our hearty congratulations to the Faculty of Law, its alumni, professors, academic and support staff on attaining this milestone of 100 years of legal education service in Canada. This gala is the first of many events that will be held over the next 12 months here in Edmonton and throughout the country to recognize and celebrate the centenary of our Faculty of Law. As we think about outstanding leaders, I'd like to recognize and take a moment to recognize one of our most distinguished alumni, a great leader and mentor, the Honorable Peter Lougheed. Peter Lougheed was a thoughtful visionary who changed the province of Alberta and Canada as a whole in such profound and enduring ways. His legacy lives on in the example he set for us as a role model for everyday citizens and in particular law students and lawyers to step up and take on leadership roles in politics and policy that will have a positive impact on our lives as Albertans and Canadians today and for generations of Albertans and Canadians to come. He was a devoted family man. He lived his life with grace, with passion, with purpose, and with a firm and steady hand. He was a gentleman, and we will miss him. At his memorial today, there were so many fitting tributes down in Calgary. But my favorite was when he was described as a builder of people. It is my honor tonight to bring greetings on behalf of Prime Minister Stephen Harper, Justice Minister Rob Nicholson, and the Government of Canada. The University of Alberta Faculty of Law has an extraordinarily rich history of educating and mentoring lawyers who have gone on to make extraordinarily significant contributions to the legal community and in all forms of public service. This is due, of course, to the hard work and dedication of the professors, support staff and students throughout the past century who have proudly represented the green and gold wherever their lives have taken them. I would like to recognize all of their efforts and acknowledge the present Dean Philip Ryden for his leadership and the current staff of the law school for their ongoing commitment to this tradition. As you all know, many U of A law school alumni have gone on to extraordinary careers and made a profound impact in their communities and on our nation. I would like to give a special welcome and a welcome home to your keynote speaker this evening, the Right Honourable Beverly McLaughlin. As the first female Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Canada, Chief Justice McLaughlin serves as a reminder to current and future U of A law students just how far a law degree from this school can take you. It is an honour and a privilege to be here on behalf of our Premier Alison Redford and all of my colleagues in government to bring greetings and to say thank you. Uh, I want to echo first and foremost uh, the words that were spoken about uh, uh, Premier Lougheed, a role model and a mentor for many of us and someone who set an example uh, f for citizens but for lawyers in terms of our opportunity and ability to give back to our community. And so I want to say thank you on behalf of the people of Alberta and on behalf of our Premier Alison Redford for the many, many hours of service that this hundred years of the Faculty of Law represents in building our communities, in building our cities, in building our province, and creating the kind of place where our children and grandchildren can have a future and a place where we do trade out into the world, a place where our graduates are representatives at all levels of governments and the courts, at all levels of business across the world, where we can compete internationally. It is a phenomenal education from a phenomenal school. It served me well, I know it served all of you well, and it does remind us on a daily basis of the opportunity that we have to give back to create a better place for the future. Congratulations on 100 years, and I'm looking forward to the next, well, a portion of the next 100. I'd like to say one thing about law and the importance of law schools, legal profession to society. It is a rule of law that distinguishes us from many countries around the world. And the strength of the legal system in this country is what gives us the strength of democracy. I think that's vitally important. So to schools like University of Alberta and law schools across the country produce amazing people who understand the importance of the rule of law. I am just delighted to be here to be part of tonight's celebration and to bring congratulations on behalf of the entire University of Alberta community of faculty, students, staff, and alumni. 
When I look back over the 100-year history of the Faculty of Law, one word comes to mind over and over. Leadership. Now, it is my great pleasure to introduce one of the faculty's most distinguished alumni, the Right Honorable Beverly McLaughlin, Chief Justice of Canada. We all know Alberta became a province in 1905. Its founders understood that a strong legal system was the cornerstone of democracy, development, and a better life for all. And so, seven years after the province was founded in 1912, they founded the Faculty of Law. I cannot pass on without a salute to one such predecessor whose passing has saddened the people of this province this week, Peter Lougheed. Peter graduated from the U of A faculty in 1952. He began and closed his career with the practice of law, but between those legal bookends, he took time to become the Premier of Alberta and one of Canada's most illustrious statesmen. What Alberta is now and what Canada is now, a constitutionally independent country endowed with the Charter of Rights, is due in no small part to Peter Lougheed's vision and statesmanship. We owe this predecessor a great debt. Well, I was privileged uh, to attend the Faculty of Law from 1965 to 1968. You've heard that I came from unprepossessing background in a very small town that very few have visited, Pincher Creek, Alberta. I have to tell you that no less than six Superior Court judges have come from Pincher Creek. Well, I went to law school in 65 by accident. I had a degree in philosophy. I had no job and no prospect of a job. So I went home, back to the ranch in Pincher Creek for the summer, tried helping my mother cook for the hired hands and satisfy my other uh, aspirations by classifying wildflowers, but it didn't seem quite enough. And so one day I sent a vaguely addressed letter to the Faculty of Law at the University of Alberta, asking for information. By return post, a missive arrived from Dean Bowker. You are accepted, it said. <laughs> See you September 4th. Well, I didn't know what to make of that. The September rolled around and still finding myself unemployed, I made my way to, by Greyhound bus to Edmonton and showed up on the appointed date at the Rutherford Library, an elegant building that also housed the faculty. I'll give it a few days, I thought, and see how it goes. Well, the few days became a week and I ended up staying in law for the rest of my life. It was a memorable three years during our time, uh, and I know some of my classmates are here, and I'm so happy to see them at the uh, Faculty of Law. Classes at 8.30, very crowded classrooms, tiny library, a classically rigid curriculum, no options. I think we got one in second year and a few in third. But they were years that instilled in us the fundamentals of legal reasoning and problem solving. Amazing lecturers like Dr. Scott, Trevor Anderson, where are you Trevor? Can't see, anyway. And the inimitable Wilbur F. Bowker himself with his raspy powerful voice and his tendency to break into his honed half hour rendition of Casey at the Bat on the slightest hint of an invitation. In the graceful way of that time, the women, and we were only a handful, began the year with tea with Mrs. Bowker, herself a distinguished lawyer and later family court judge. The standards were high, the workload heavy, and the exams tough, 
but there were good times and fast friendships. I made, as I recall it, absolutely no particular contribution to the class culture other than getting passably good marks. Uh, as I, at, the best I can offer is that at the closing banquet, I was awarded the citation for hairdo of the year. <laughs> well, the transition from law school to articling in 1968 seemed seamless. Many of our professors had been distinguished practicing lawyers. So we just moved from taking notes from them to, in the classroom to toting bags for them across town. Well, on reflection, maybe it wasn't quite that easy. On my first interview with one such teacher, practitioner, after what I thought had been a splendid exposition of my assets and aspirations, he leaned back in his chair across the table and he said, well, this has been lovely. Just one more question. Why do you want to work? Well, I must have sat there in stunned silence because being a gentleman, he moved to fill the gap. Well, he explained kindly, you're a married woman, you see. Indeed, by that time I was. As I fled the office, it dawned on me, in his world, a world which happily for me was already changing, married women didn't work. I got a job with a law firm across the hall. I received a wonderful set of articles with Woodmoyer, Hyde, and Ross. I practiced in Edmonton for a while until a family move took me to British Columbia and eventually academe in the bench. And every day of what has proved to be a fascinating and rewarding career, I remind myself, none of this would have happened had Wilbur Bowker on that fateful August day in traditional Alberta can-do, cut the red tape style, not written those memorable three words, you are accepted. The Alberta of today looms large on the Canadian and indeed the world stage, self-reliant and confident. How has this transformation come about? It wasn't just oil. I like to think that the legacy, to return to that word, not just of natural resources, but of people and of values played a role. An emphasis on individual worth and openness. An attitude of why not? instead of why. And all of this grounded in respect for the law and the role the law plays in developing society and improving the lives of women, men, and children. This is the real and lasting legacy of the Faculty of Law of the University of Alberta and those who built it. The faculty stands for the importance of law and the importance of getting law right. Above all, it stands for the values that are embodied in the law, responsibility, equality, and justice. The Faculty of Law, as it celebrates its 100th anniversary, has so much to be proud of. It has played a pivotal role in Alberta's development. It has moved the province from small-scale, small-town justice to a sophisticated, responsive justice system that ranks among the best in the world. And I believe it stands ready to take on whatever the future may bring. In a phrase, a legacy to celebrate. Merci beaucoup. Hello, school, my old friend. You'll come to beg from me again. Across my desk there comes a new request You dearly love to give a new bequest And the guilt trip that was planted in my brain Still remains But my response is silence Tell us all once more I hate to tell you but I'm poor You think that I have built two thousand hours But pro bono work my life devours Without a single nickel in the bank I just don't rank I'm in need 
of guidance. You found my new email address and hope that now you'll answer yes. And just as I'm about to press delete, I see the dentist's office down the street. Oh, scraping black, black, black from inside, inside a smelly gum black could be, be my job. Drill through the screams of silence. And in the naked light I see 10,000 students watching, watching me. Lawyers talking without speaking, judges hearing without listening. Imagine! Students writing briefs that professors never read. Instead they plead, just send us mouths of finance. I did not know Just how bad my life could blow I contemplate my depth of poverty If I had not obtained a law degree Then I realized that I owe you every cent So I relent Of finance. It's not necessary, but thank you very much. A hundred years ago, the law school could never have gotten off the ground without the support of the legal community. In the century that followed, we've always been able to count on our alumni and friends to support our efforts to inspire our students, to develop new ways to understand and improve the law, and to serve our community. My colleagues and I know that you will want to join with us to build on these successes as we enter our next hundred years of commitment to excellence. Thank you very much. As chairman of the Board of Governors of this great university, it would be remiss if I didn't share my own final thought tonight. The job of building a great faculty of law and an outstanding university is never done. It requires constant attention, nurturing, and support from all avenues of society, from government, industry, and alumni. I think you'll agree with me that the last 100 years has demonstrated that great faculties and tremendous universities can truly make the world a better place and fulfill, fulfill Henry Marshall's vision of uplifting the whole people. What's that phrase, the Latin phrase, res ipsa loquid, or I think the thing speaks for itself. So. so I urge you all to stay connected with this university, with this faculty. Together we will continue to build a great university, a great community, and a great society. Do what you can whenever you can. Together, the next 100 years will be as special as the last. Thank you all so much for coming tonight. Enjoy the rest of the evening, and have a great evening.